If you're simply trying to replace your income in retirement, you might be making one of the biggest mistakes that most people make when it comes to wealth creation. Now, don't get me wrong. We want to replace our income, but I think there's a bigger game at play here. And in this episode of the Affluent Entrepreneur Show, we're going to talk about your number, why you need to track your numbers, and the process to get you there. So I'll see you in this episode of the Affluent Entrepreneur Show. See you soon. Welcome to this episode of the Affluent Entrepreneur Show. All right, let's talk about numbers. Let's talk about your number. What is your number? Look, if we're trying to get to financial freedom, do you even know what that number is? Imagine this for a moment. You're one of those people that maxed out your 401k. You got the company match every year. You did everything right. You're putting money away. And then you find yourself down the road, getting ready to retire, and you're looking at the numbers and you go, God, I don't have enough. I don't have the lifestyle that I want. Now, here's the challenge is that we have a broken retirement system. We're going to talk about that, but I want to shift your mind. I want to give you some tools and a way to look at this so you start to understand what that number is. And now you know where you got to go to because here's what we've seen. Northwestern Mutual did a recent survey and they said that most people believe they need to have at least 1250000 uh, in assets to retire comfortably. And it's a 20% jump from 2021 to 2022. So it's 20% up. But here's the other devastating, I think, statistic. That retirement savings dropped to below $90,000. Dropped 11% from 2021 to 2022. And that the anticipated retirement age has gone from 64 year, 62 years of age, 62 and a half, to 64, the expected right to retirement. So here's the challenge with this, is that if we don't get this right, if we don't take control of it, we could find ourselves down the road in our later years where we, we are struggling with income, or we're on fixed income, not having enough assets to have the life that we really dreamed of. And I don't want that for you. And so in this episode, I want to walk you through the financial liberation journey. I want to talk through some of the the pitfalls in our current retirement system and how we do that and the pathway to get you to the number that you want. And stay tuned. I'm going to give you a tool to help you do the calculations, at least to get the ballpark so you know where you're at and what you need to do. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to jump to my iPad so we can walk through some of these frameworks and and walk you through it. If you are listening and not watching, make sure we'll make sure that we hook it all up in the in the show notes. But you can go and watch the video on on YouTube just the same, and make sure that we give you the tools to get access to making the difference in getting control of your financial numbers. So let's do this. We're going to jump here. The financial journey. This is truly about how you create liberation, how you become financially liberated. And, you know, often people will come and they'll say, Mel, I want financial freedom. The problem is, is that if you're sitting there, like the statistics said, and you've got $86,000 saved for retirement and your financial freedom number is well over a million, that chasm may seem so large that you'll say, I'll never get there. And so you settle. I don't, I don't want anyone to settle. I don't, I don't think life is a settled life. I don't think we live a good enough life. I think we, we live it fully. Whatever that fully is, whatever you define, we live it fully. We get to the end of our days. We got our toes on that grave. We're looking down. We look back. We're sweaty. We're dirty. We're tired. And we go, it was well lived. That's what I want for you. Okay. No matter what your circumstances are, no matter what they are. I've had hard times. I have lost money. I've had to start over again. We've seen people that far worse than me, far better than me. So I get it that you might have some circumstances going on in your life, but those are moments and moments that we need to build on. Okay. Moments that we need to build on. So one of the things that I I try to do in this financial liberation journey, this journey to financial freedom is to understand that there are stopping points, that there are gateways we have to go through to make sure that we're on that journey. Otherwise, there's this big chasm. Like I said, financial freedom might be $2 million, $3 million for you when you start to calculate the number. And you might be sitting there at 100,000. You go, I'll never get there. It seems so far away. So we're going to give you some stopping points. 
and some things to strive for as, as benchmarks to get you there. And so the first stopping point and the first benchmark is to make sure that you reach financial stability. And financial stability is where you have enough assets generating cash flow that they will cover your necessities. It will cover things like your medical, your shelter, your food, your transportation, your clothing, okay? It, it covers all the necessities. It isn't, it isn't the luxuries. It isn't the, the discretionaries, if you will. It's not, it's not Netflix. It's not Manny Petties. It's not fun technology. Yeah, that's nice, and we'll deal with it. But at first, to have financial stability, we want to make sure that the necessities of life, our survival is taken care of, utilities, transportation, shelter, food, medical, those things are taken care of. And when those things are taken care of, you can, you can sit back and say, I'm at least on stable footing. That's the first stopping point. And once we have financial stability, okay, once we have financial stability, you then move to the next piece. And the next piece is to find financial security. Financial security is where you have enough assets generating enough cash flow that you could cover your living expenses. So let's just play the numbers for a moment. If we look at this, if we look at this and say that our necessities, just transportation, rents, uh, medical is $2,000, then that's how much our necessities are. That's where we need for, for financial stability. Clearly, if it's just $2,000, you're not living in California or you're not living in New York, okay? If your monthly, monthly uh, uh, survival is on 2000 bucks, okay? It's probably a little more than that. Now, what about your expenses, the rest of your expenses? This is where you add back the Manny Petties. This is where you add back the Netflix. This is where you add back some of those other elements. And so maybe that, instead of it being $2,000, it's now $5,000, okay? Because you added some things back that it's covering all of your current expenses. In other words, you have enough assets generating cash flow that your current expenses are covered. Your life doesn't change. Okay? That's financial security, which leads me to the third piece and the third stepping stone. And that third stepping stone is what we call financial independence. Financial independence is where you have the ability to replace 100% of your current income. See, because I'm anticipating that maybe even though your expenses are $5,000, that maybe your income is something greater. Maybe it's $7,000. So you're earning $7,000. Your expenses are five. You have $2,000 left over that you're using for investing and doing other things. So financial independence is where you replace 100% of your income. And now not only is are the assets able to pay for your current lifestyle? It's able to fund your investing in the growth of that lifestyle over time. That's true financial independence. And then the last stage is financial freedom. And the last stage, when we talk about financial freedom, this is what covers your vision. This is when we sit down with our clients and, our, and, the, and the folks in, in the Affluence Blueprint we start to spend the time and say, what do you want the whole, the ultimate life to be like? Now, it could be you want a tent in Montana. I'm totally cool, okay? Or it could be you want a yacht in Monaco. I don't care, okay? The question is, what's yours? And what does it take to get you there? When you want to reach financial freedom, the expectation is that we're creating a money machine, a, a, an asset pool that generates enough cash that not only covers my survival, it covers my survival, it covers my current lifestyle expenses, it covers my current income, but it also pays to have the additional lifestyle that we envision down the road. That's true financial freedom. That's the liberation journey. And so this is where I think we should be striving. The challenge that I see with many financial planners is they look at your current income and they say, 
well, let's just replace your income. And in fact, they don't want to replace 100% income. They replace about 70 or 80% income and say, that's good enough. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm a stick in the mud. But if you're going to work all your life to build a retirement, the last thing I ever want to tell you is that, great, thanks for working for 40, 50 years. Now reduce your lifestyle by 20% and get on with the rest of your life. Hell no. No, no, no. I'd rather be in a place where I look at you and go, you get to increase your lifestyle by 20%. Go enjoy it. Go live it fully. That's what I want for you. That's true independence. That's true affluence. And so, and it's possible. It just, it's a disciplined journey. It takes some work. But the problem is that we, we come from an industrial age mindset where we have a broke system on how they taught us to live and to build wealth. And, and I'm going to walk you through what this looks like is that they literally told us to get in the game and, and start saving. Here's your 401k, here's your IRAs, here's your savings account, start saving and just save during your earning years as much as you possibly can. And they don't give you a whole lot of guidance, okay? Your max on, on the IRA is, is a little over $6,000 6, a year. On the, on the uh, 401k, depending on age, you're in the $20,000 to $30,000 range. Okay, but th th they're telling you to replace income. The problem is they don't have your lifestyle vision in, in, in the works. They're not thinking about what are we actually trying to accomplish. They're just saying save, 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 save with no target, with no number, with no idea of what the destination is. And so what ends up happening is that if you get to the destination, you don't even know you're at the destination. Do you have enough assets already? Do you have a big enough money machine already? Do you need more? Are you nowhere close? Do you know that? That, we're going to get to the bottom of that in this episode because that's the thing that I think is missing from most plans is that they're not looking at what your vision is. They're not saying, hey, Jane, John, what do you really want for your life? What do you want it to look like? And how do we plan to make that happen? See, what they do is they tell you to continue to, to save during your earning years. And you get to this one point that they call retirement. And then they turn around and they say, okay. Reduce your lifestyle because your retirement, most, most plans um, require you to take 70% or 80% of your income and we work off of that. So they say reduce your income and then start spending it down. So you spend during your retirement years. The problem is they don't know how long you're going to live. And so you have this dynamic of a hope and pray. Save, spend, pray. That's the mentality. That's what we've been taught. Save, spend, pray. And what are we praying for? We're praying that our life doesn't outlive our money because they have you spending. And, and if you're fortunate, you have plenty of money and, and your life and, 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 uh, and your, your money is greater than your life. But if you're unfortunate, you live longer or your money isn't enough and your life is greater than your money and you run out. And so this idea of save, spend, and pray is the wrong methodology. It's the wrong way to do it. What I say you got to do, and this is what everything is that we're trying to accomplish here, is that we need to build a money machine. In other words, we're going to save and invest and grow. And then that money machine is going to spit off cash flow. We're not spending it down. It's creating enough cash flow to cover us at the financial freedom number. So it never declines. And then when that machine, when your, your life is through, and may it be a long, long time for now, that machine passes to your, to your heirs. It could be your spouse, your partner, your kids, your grandkids, your charities. And they get to work off the cash flow. And then it keeps passing down. If God forbid something happens to me, that machine, the cash flow from the machine takes care of Stephanie's life. And when God forbid something happens to Stephanie, it moves to Jeremy and Cammie. And God forbid something is, it moves to, to Aria and Emily, my, my granddaughters. And the machine 
has the potential to be a perpetual existence when you understand the skills it takes to run it. But what I want to do first is to get you out of the mindset of save, spend, pray. I want you to get you in the mindset of save, invest, grow. Okay, that's the thing that I think uh, needs to happen. Now, how do we do this? Let's just look at the path to make this happen. And the path has got eight steps to it. And this is to get to your number because right now you may not know what your number is. We're going to get to the number. I'm going to show you how to calculate the number, how to get to the number so you start to understand it. The first thing is this. You got to look at your life and say, what do I want my life to look like? I sat with my wealth team and I said, my wife and I love to travel. And when we travel, we don't necessarily want to do it cheaply. We want to do it where we create an experience that we can relish, we can remember, we want to create memories. And so it's expensive. We say we want to make sure that we have about 100 grand a year, minimal, for travel. They looked at me wide-eyed and go, what? I go, no, that's us. Define your life. Their job, a wealth team's job, is not to criticize your life unless it's unethical, immoral, or illegal. It's not their job to criticize what you want to create as a vision for your life. It is their job to facilitate you accomplishing it. And they'll put some of it back on you and say, great, if we're going to do this, you need to earn this. And we're going to see that when I get through the numbers here. But I want you to first spend the time truly defining your life. What are the things? Go back to the episode where I talked about the affluence vision. We'll make sure we hook it up in the show notes. But the, the affluence vision where you start to understand what is truly meaningful, what is truly impactful, what is truly peaceful, what is it going to take? Define that. Then we start to look at the next piece. The next step is once we define it, is we need to estimate what it would cost us on a monthly basis to have that life. Now, I get it. I'm going to get notes from people that say, you can't estimate because I'm not retiring for 20 years. I get it. But that doesn't give you an excuse to not try. I would rather have a fuzzy target than no target at all. Because most people are driving with no target at all. They have no destination. They're not even looking at the horizon. So I'd rather get a fuzzy target that we can define and refine and be more precise as you get closer, okay? So we have a trajectory and a direction to go. So you're going to estimate the cost. So step two is to estimate what it would cost you to have that type of life. It could be 10000 a month. It could be 20000 a month. It could be 50000 I don't know. Depends on how you define your life. Estimate what that is. Now, to get to the ballpark of what number you need to have as a machine, as a, as a total amount, and this is, this is really a rough, rough estimate, okay? It is a ballpark number that will at least give you a trajectory. If we were spending the time doing a, a detailed plan, we would take into consideration a lot of the nuances that are unique to your life. It could be the number of kids, college-bound kids, grandkids, uh, charities, those kinds of things. This, this formula that I'm going to give you is very generic. That's going to give you a ballpark, but it is not going to give you specifics to, to your life yet. You'll have to define that. And this is more for your wealth team to do with you, but this will at least let you know what's the ballpark number. Okay, so you take that estimated cost. Let's say it's it's, I don't know, $10,000, okay, a month. Um, uh, or, and so that's $120,000 a year, okay? Uh, you, you take that, so step number three is that, that you will take that number and multiply it by 25, okay? So let's say it's $120,000 a year. Okay, you multiply it by 25. What is that? Uh, 3 million, I think it is. Okay, don't, this is, this is always dangerous when I'm doing math live, but I'm going to do it anyways, uh, just to see if we can get it. So let me just do this. Uh, 120,000 times 25, ah, 3 million, I did it right. All right, so three million bucks. So what that's telling you is that you need to have three million dollars in what we call investable assets, assets that can generate cash flow in order to cover one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in 
in annual expenses to have the lifestyle you want, if that's what it is. Now, here's the thing to understand. This is assuming you're going to retire at a tra traditional age in your 60s, okay? If you're sitting back in, in the fire movement and you say, I want to retire at 40, okay? Well, that's another 20 years. That number is going to probably need to be a little larger. You're going to have to be a little more aggressive. So, so this is where I say the unique circumstances may not... Um, are not covered in in this type of formula, but it's going to give you a ballpark. So now you look at it and say, okay, but Mel, I get it. I might need 3 million bucks, but I already have some assets. I'm already putting money in a 401k. I'm putting money. I have it's my, uh, money invested in index funds or, or in other investments. So you take that portion of those investments that you have and you make sure that you understand what the value of those investments are by the time you retire. And so you'll you'll assume that they're going to continue to grow for a period of time and you calculate what that number is. And, and so you have your investments that are an offset. So this is what you need. This is what you have. Your investments are ready that you have. And there's a second thing that you have. And that is how much are you going to save every year between now and retirement? Okay. I know this is going to be a lot of math, but I'm going to give you a tool that makes it easy. I just need you to understand the principles. Follow me here. Okay. So I know what I need. I know what I have currently. And now I figure out how much am I going to put away every year? Okay. I'm going to save 20,000 a year, 40,000 a year, 10,000 a year, 5,000 a year. I'm going to save those every year. So now I have that going to have this that I'm going to, right? And so now you look at it and you subtract those two numbers from it. So I, if I need 3 million and I look at it and I say, oh, I already have a million in assets and I'm going to be putting $10,000 away for the next, uh, got, you know, whatever years I have, those numbers come off the 3 million. And what you end up with is this le leftover amount. Number seven is, is this leftover amount, which is the amount that you actually have to build, okay? And then from here, you look at it and say, if, for instance, let's just put some numbers to it. If I had three million and I already had half a million in assets, okay? And I'm going to put money away, that's going to be another 200,000 in assets. That means that I'm going to have half a million plus 700, uh, 200,000, that's 700,000 off the three million, off the three million, that means that that I'm going to end up with two point three million dollars that I need to make up for. What? Follow that three million minus the seven hundred thousand. I know math is not always easy, but that's the the game we're playing. That now allows me to understand. I need two point three million. That allows me to look at the last step, and that is how much more do I need to save to make that happen? This is the exercise that a lot of people don't want to do because they don't like the answer or they're afraid of the answer. But the problem is if we run away from the answer, we can't solve the problem. I'd rather you be aware that, hey, I've got a million dollar gap. I have a half a million dollar gap. I need 200,000 or I'm already there. Or I need 3 million and deal with it. And we say, all right, because once we know that, now we tackle with how do we earn it? How do we save it? How do we invest it? How do we make it a reality? Now, I know I went through some calculations here. Here's what I want to give you to make it easier for you because the choices you make with your money today should be in service of the future you want to create tomorrow. Let me say that again. The choices you make with your money today should be in service of the future you want to create tomorrow. So I created a tool that is downloadable. It's totally free. Okay. And I want you, and, and what you'll see is that you'll actually be able to put your numbers in and it'll calculate the number for you. It'll do the calculations we just walked through. I just need you to understand the calculations. How you get the tool is go to Mel Abraham dot com forward slash number 
and you'll download an Excel template. You're going to put information into these yellow boxes and then everything else is going to calculate for you. You'll put in the years to retirement. You'll put in your current investable assets. You'll estimate your annual savings. You'll estimate the returns on your investments that you're going to get. Um, and you'll put in the number that you're going to need every year for your lifestyle and the rest of the calculations will be done for you. It will give you a ballpark of where you need to be. It'll at least let you get there and go, ooh, I got some work to do. Great. Don't look at it as, oh crap, I got some work to do. Get excited and say, now I know what kind of work I've got. Let me get the work done. Now we start implementing strategies. Now we start looking at what the hows are. Now we start looking at things like, like, do we need to control expenses? How do we elevate and scale your income? How do we, how do we do some? We'll do some more shows on this too, because I, once we know what our target is, now we actually have the game to play. We, we know where we're going towards to build that money machine to give you that financial freedom. Now I know this was a heavier episode with some calculations. I was doing some math. Go back to it. If you're listening to it, slow it down. I don't know if you want to slow my voice down, but but I'd also invite you to go to the YouTube and watch it because I'm actually drawing it out there and you'll see it there. And then download the tool, melabraham.com forward slash number. We'll hook it up in the show notes and go through that. All right. Let me know what you come up with. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what it makes you feel like because then we can solve the problem. It doesn't matter how far you are away from the number you want. What matters is that you're on the journey and then we can navigate ourselves to it. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you found this of value. Go get the tool, go get the number. Let's figure it out. You're not alone on this path, okay? Always, always, as you're doing this, stay focused on your vision. Stay focused on creating an affluent life. Stay focused on doing the things that actually matter, that actually move the needle for you in your way. Okay, and as I always say on every episode, until we get a chance to see each other on the road, another episode to always, always strive to live a life that outlives you. I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.